Hello everybody, welcome to our coverage of this six hours of Spa-Francorchamps, race three of the FIA World Endurance Championship. Small cars to grid positions, please. Everybody else is in the safety car queue. And now when you're on wets, Ferrari are going, OK, let's go, Forza Ferrari. And a heck of a lot of people in the grandstands will be doing exactly the same. You're going to see that yellow Cadillac drop severely backwards. And anyone else, therefore, that's on slicks at the start of this race, but then they don't have to come into the pits. They can just survive. They'll be okay. The race has started at the last lap. Bear in mind, for the purpose of race duration, we are already in race. We go green in Spa-Francorchamps after an extra formation lap. It is the number seven Toyota, Mike Conway, that leads the field to the line. Is he on wets? I don't think he is. I think he might be on slicks. The Ferraris behind are definitely on wets. Nick Nielsen, Antonio Giovinazzi. Challenging into the first corner, and Conway is trying desperately to hold on. The blue nose Cadillac is on is, uh, wet, the yellow is on slicks, and the Jota Porsche on wet weather tyres has jumped both the factory cars and the yellow caddy. So, our lead group, Anthony Davidson, is that Toyota on slicks and doing a great job so. holding on? Yeah, I, I would say so. Oh, uh, and that's yes. The, the, the twitch yeah. just is the giveaway, and the Jota <laughs> overtakes it around the outside up the Kemmel Strait. But if Conway, like I said, can just survive these first few laps, he'll be okay. Number two, Cadillac. Lamber for second on Nick Nielsen. Can't get it around the outside. There is the Jota car, the gold car of Antonio Felix da Costa. We know he started on wets. They will have built more speed, but of course, the track is not soaking wet. The Peugeots are on wets. They're coming past the Toyota. And at the moment, if you're the number eight Toyota, by the way, Sebastian Buemi that started last, you're going to gamble. You've got to gamble, haven't you? Oh, and there's the number seven car off. Off he goes, and the Cadillac is it's staying with the Toyota. He's a phenomenal job, actually, uh, Ring of Anders Ander in that, that Both yellow on slicks. Yeah. yeah. Conway, actually, now knowing he was on slicks there against all of the cars around him on West, he, he survived really well around turn one. Because look where he was, not on the wet on the inside, not on the wet on the outside, on the dry line. Honestly, picking your braking spot for the first time down in mm. so I really expected a lot of locking, people running wide, maybe into the gravel. R hats off to all of them. That was not easy no, to no. get through there. Really well done. The number eight car on the hands of Zed Boemi has cleared the GT field, now starts to make his way into and through the LMP2s after that start from the back row of the grid. Swap of positions there, Mike Conway finds his way past Bamba. Boemi is two LMPs away from Michael Christensen in the tail of the LMP, uh, the hypercar field. Look at the speed difference, though. Look where Conway's got to, just in one corner yeah. compared to Bamber, and now under attack from the... Yeah, and the slicks, unsurprisingly, getting prepared, and you're shaking your head, Martin. But, yeah, wasted a lap. Second. They should have peeled in off the safety car queue. If you ever needed a demonstration as to why racing cars have slick tyres instead of like your road car, yeah. this is why. Box, to protect box, the box. position. Box, box, box. You, you're, but you're fighting the inevitable. You're going to die. Go into the pits. No, he doesn't. Why are you Where not is? going into the pits? Because I think they've got to get it. Uh, Second else car's did. in, 50. 50, that's probably He's coming from fourth, Nick Nielsen. No, both. Come on, you've got two to pit crew. Eighth position overall <laughs> as these teams pit. Next car behind him is Sebastian Buemi yeah. at ninth position. Buemi's in the, the back points, of the grid, remember. Nine laps in. And then they've now, unfortunately for the slick runners just going on, they've got the painful process. Now Buemi gets the run that he needed on the van wall with nobody else in his way. He picks up a slipstream actually as well. He quick look to the right-hand side, you see him, and he's made the move before even the, the corner comes at him at turn five. And here's the big lead battle in GTM. Sarabovi giving no inch, no quarter to Tomino Fuji. That's not he's coming, that's not he's coming that's over, not he's not coming he's over. He's, he's going to get in trouble for yeah, that. That's, he, that's he right. completely pushed yeah. her off the track there. So, uh, yeah, you know, there's being hard and fair. That was hard. It wasn't fair. Now, this is the, the Ferrari battle with the number three... That's the caddy. Cadillac, the Ferraris yeah. are a lap behind, Correct. but look at the pace they've got. And by the way, the Aston Martin you just saw coming out. Oh, the Cadillac! Oh, oh, there's a big one oh. in the Rouge, big one. 
Safety car will be out because that is not going to be tidied up in a hurry. That is the number three Cadillac of Renga van der Zander from second place. Was the proximity of the Ferrari taking a bit of air off the back of the car under the big Safety grandstand? No question at all. He's annoyed at himself. He, he is. slams the door in frustration. Yes. Ah. He's on the right line. Oh. Oh, it's just, you know, it's like as the car bottomed. It bottomed in Eau Rouge and that just sent it. He straddled the curb, didn't he? And it, yeah, well, <laughs> you know, there's a huge audience there. All lights are off on the car. Not uh -oh. even the, oh no, there's one on the, on the cockpit side. Is that the other side? Porsche? Meanwhile, uh, Ferrari versus Porsche, top of the hill, the he's Ferrari gonna goes off. Back. He's going to have to give that place back. Leaders in the pits. Sebastian Buemi leads the race for one lap. He's got 2% energy left. This is like Formula E. He is way offline, Rebecca Jones there in the shades, or with the shades, the uh, PR for Porsche Penske Motorsport. <laughs> oh, Kevin Est. Oh, hang on a minute, let's have a look. This is their fourth stop. Yes, they did. That's probably struggling. Here. Yeah. Can't get it on there, Jax. That's costing them big time. Dear, oh dear, what is going on there down oh. at Ferrari? Can you imagine a Buemi being so calm in those situations? Oh. Apparently they, they were monitoring it and it's one of those things where very easy to see in terms of bodywork. Yeah, the wheel nut goes flying there. Yep. there was, that was chaos down at Ferrari in this pit stop. I think it was mostly caused by the air jack not yep. being able to uh, Yeah, the air connector in, wouldn't yeah. connect and so nothing happens until the car's off the ground. Oh. Who's going to back out of this one? He's onto the marbles, he's off the track of the car momentarily. At the front lift up, I thought that was going to be a moment where the car yeah. started to flip over. At that very corner, he was a lucky boy there. L watch this, look at the front end. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. And all it needed. You know what I do? Closing, closing, closing. Goes to the rear of Zach Robichon. Goes to the inside. He's going to look up the inside of the Porsche and will retake the lead in GTE Am. Oh, oh what's happened here? at least been off. Yes, he has been off. A spin for Villeneuve on the exit of turn 15. Oh, oh two cars, it's a 54. 54. Oh. Those two cars. Oh, no, actually. Sorry, I didn't yeah, see that as being the dear, Ferrari. No, it's, you need to see it from so many different angles. I... No, so Villeneuve's on the outside. Oh, and he's just, oh, he's clipped him. He clipped, clipped the grass, didn't he, on the outside? Well, no, he's clipped the car. Ah. Uh, that's a good shot. Six of one, That's a good half shot. a dozen of the other. Uh, I was trying to put myself in the position of what would I have done if I was in the van wall, if I was in Villeneuve's position. Uh, so Jacques looks like he's unhappy with that body language. Of, yeah. uh, you know, it suggests he's unhappy with uh, Francesco Castellacci. Castellacci, oh. yeah. Interested to see it's all four wheels spinning there. That's the way they go. And people are saying, well, hang on, how can you be spinning all four wheels? Because you can only engage the hybrid boost uh, over a certain speed out on track, over Apart 150 kph. In the pit lane, you can. Yeah. You're allowed to spin your tyres in the pit lane, and you can spin all four tyres. Three oh. Oh, uh, Oh, oh the, double O. Oh, that's been in the back. That's, that's been, a cold that's, tires, that's isn't it? Been, safety car. Back was into the wall. Safety car will be scrambled here. And that is why it was so important Ooh. to get the lap back. I mean, yes. Didn't that expect was that. Not a comfortable ride. No. Not a comfortable ride at all. That's, so the, the, okay. that's the, frustration. the frustration. That's the primal scream. For the lead in LMP2, Ferdy Habsburg under pressure behind the Ferrari. Well, that's how it and happened. That's Mirko Bortolotti getting by. That was the replay. You're right, yeah. away from the restart. That's and look at Hansen then sticking his nose in there. He was fourth in the queue, <laughs> came through there into third, nearly second. That was close from Hansen, wasn't it? Yeah. Maximum risk. And yeah, that was a this decisive moment from Bortolotti. Oh, then he wouldn't be. That must have just been two left, tyres. Then. Left sides only. Yeah, left it, sides only for the number eight car it, as well. It would have been for. Yeah. Spins yeah. those front tyres. Away he goes. And here's Kobe Ashi. So this is going to be close. Well, Louise is insisting number seven car took four tyres. 
So it's left sides only for the number eight car. They need track position. Got to hold him off. It's a 202.327 in pursuit of Brendan Hartley. Wow. He's going to be slow here. Race. He's so slow there because oh. of the wow. left hand tyres. Oh, can't take it there. Give it back. I think he's got to, to give it back. back. Has to give it back. That was not even in Belgium, that overtake. Back. Let's have a look what he does. So he's got oh. the momentum. He goes to the outside. He's not even pushed off the track. Look at this. This is it, final lap for this pair. So Where? he caught him what? He caught him three seconds that lap. Yeah. And he's in the slipstream as well. Makowiki knows it, it defends on the inside. Collado goes to the outside. This is the racing line, don't forget. It's and good on the brakes it too. And just it about. Just. Oh. Brilliant driving from Collado. And Makowiki did everything he could Absolutely. to stop him, but wasn't to be. But Kobayashi. Checker flag is out. Kamu Kobayashi wins it for Toyota. It is a 1 2 for Toyota Gazoo Racing. And. Brandon Hartley will be 17 seconds back, make that 10 seconds back at the end. I mean, all my teammates are really solid stints, all of them. So, uh, yeah, all credit to the guys and everyone on the on car seven. And obviously, car eight, mega job as well, coming back from. Uh, you know, the issue they had yesterday in qualifying and coming all the way from the back of the grid to, to P2. So, yeah, great team result. And, um, yeah, can't say enough for the guys. Did a great job. Victory at home for Team WRT. They claim the win in LMP2, a race that almost anybody in the field could have taken. Victory in GTE Am goes to the 83 Richard Mille Ferrari as Lilu Wadu becomes the first ever female driver to win a world championship race. A remarkable 1-2 victory for Toyota that increases their advantage at the top of the hypercar rankings with Ferrari leading the chasing pack. And while Toyota maintains its advantage, the threat from behind is very real. Victory from pole for number seven from the last row on the grid, second for the number eight car. WRT came out on top in a frantic LMP2 battle and the Richard Mill Racing Team make history in GTE Am. That's it for race three in Spa. The next race is the big one, the Centenary Le Mans 24 Hours, the one that everybody wants to win.